Africa is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating continents our planet has to offer. As the so-called cradle of mankind, Africa plays a fundamental role in the history of our species. Many years ago, the early form of humans developed there, which finally conquered mountains, deserts and seas and spread across the entire globe. Rich in culture and history, the African continent is still home to numerous mysteries and secrets that still need to be unraveled in the future. The seven exciting discoveries that we're going to take a closer look at today also keep the experts questioning their discoveries. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most world-changing discoveries thus far. Leddy Pine What goes by the awkward scientific designation LD350-1 could embody one of the most breathtaking finds of all time, the missing link in human history. Found in 2015 in the Afar region of Ethiopia, the lower jaw fragment is estimated to be up to 2.8 million years old. Where this historical piece of the puzzle has to be used at the end of the day has always been the subject of heated debate, because the Leddy Pine is actually overshadowed by a few question marks. Regarding the size of the teeth and the lower jawbone, the fragment corresponds best to the genus Australopithecus. However, many other characteristics, such as the shape of the tooth crowns, are strikingly reminiscent of the genus Homo. In fact, the experts expressly refrain from assigning the jaw to one of the two Homo species of the time. Theoretically, it's even conceivable that we're dealing here with a previously unknown Homo genus. Examination of the site showed that there was increased volcanic activity in a Serengeti-like landscape at the time. Possibly, according to researchers, this ecological upheaval contributed to the fact that the genus Homo emerged from one of the Australopithecus species. The White Lady what is the background of the White Lady in Namibia? Experts have been asking this question ever since the rock painting was discovered on January 4, 1918. At that time, the German researcher Reinhard Mack interpreted the work of art as a depiction of a warrior. However, the depiction was not given any major importance, which is why it fell out of the focus of experts for many decades. The ancient drawing only made headlines again in the 1950s. It was then that the French historian Henri Broy gave it its nickname, which is still world famous today. However, whether the figure is really a lady is controversial, because the body actually has no female forms. Rather, the assumption that we're dealing with a woman was based on the posture and the object in the hands, which was interpreted as a flower or vessel. Today, however, researchers assume that this is a piece of hunting equipment, which is why the White Lady may actually represent a male warrior or shaman. Made approximately two to 4,000 years ago, the drawings accompany by some other questions, so we don't know which scene would actually be immortalized there for posterity. We may be seeing a ritual incantation here that should enable a successful hunt. Another theory is that the rock paintings show a spiritual shaman dance with animal spirits. Sadly, these ancient relics have suffered severe damage over time. As a result of the unchecked influx of tourists, many paintings were damaged. Even the white thumb can now only be seen as a faint silhouette. As a result, it's now only permitted to admire the works of art accompanied by a licensed guide. Bakone Surrounding the South African town of Mashadador are some fascinating vestiges of the past, the ruins of the ancient Bakoni tribe. 
To this day, the hills around the city are adorned with stone terraces, complexes, and streets that authentically show us that African agriculture was by no means as rudimentary as people long believed before the arrival of the Europeans. According to some experts, the Bakoni ruins bear witness to the technological and agricultural innovations made by the indigenous tribe long before the colonial era. The traces of the ethnic group can be traced back to the early 16th century. But in fact, the Bakoni can look back on a much longer history. According to some theories, the age of the ruins is an incredible 200,000 years, dating back to the dawn of modern man. But we can't prove this with any certainty. To this day, numerous archaeologists are pursuing the goal of fully deciphering the history of the Bakoni and thus getting a little closer to our own beginnings. Like so many other ancient ruins, the Bakoni relics are shrouded in some exciting legends. Thus, some people are adamant that the stone walls and circles formed some kind of ancient electrical grid thousands of years ago. The people at that time succeeded in converting the resonance frequency of the Earth into a usable form of energy. Unfortunately, the Bakoni ruins were completely neglected by the government, which also caused their condition to deteriorate rapidly. In order to learn more about the true background of these ancient structures, professional investigations are urgently needed. Lalibela why Lalibela is also called New Jerusalem becomes clear to us when we take a look at the ancient monolithic churches that the Christian pilgrimage site in Ethiopia houses. As a result of their material composition, the places of worship are presented in a characteristic rust-red color. The construction of the complex began between the 12th and 13th centuries. A total of a hundred years were probably needed to complete the holy city. Unlike most other churches, however, these buildings were not constructed in the traditional way. In fact, they were carved directly out of the surrounding rock formations. With a size of up to 800 square meters and a height of 10 meters, the Lalibela churches are among the mightiest monolithic structures that man has ever created. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978, the places of worship still serve their original purpose. Every year, thousands of pilgrims flock to the pilgrimage site to celebrate their Christian faith. Greater Zimbabwe Barely 40 kilometers from the town of Masvingo in Zimbabwe, an impressive gateway to the past opens up. The ruins of Greater Zimbabwe still bear witness to the hustle and bustle that once took place here. A vibrant capital of the Munhumutapa Empire, Greater Zimbabwe is believed to have served as a steady home for up to 18,000 people between the 11th and 15th centuries. From here, the absolute heyday of the empire was initiated, which was mainly based on trade with distant countries, the extraction of gold, and cattle breeding. However, Greater Zimbabwe was completely abandoned around 1450, probably because the never-ending population boom had eroded the surrounding country. One of the most important archaeological finds recorded here are the so-called Zimbabwe birds. The approximately 40-centimeter-high figures were recovered from a place that the residents considered sacred at the time. However, it's not known why the birds made of soapstone were depicted in such an unrealistic way. Countless other artifacts have also been discovered here. The royal treasure includes many iron picks, jewelry artifacts, and glass beads from India and Chinese ceramics from the Ming Dynasty. Lost City where the most advanced technologies of our time collide with ancient relics, the past comes alive once again. As early as the 1970s and 1980s, archaeologists unearthed the ruins of centuries-old buildings near Johannesburg, although at the time researchers thought it was no more than a loose cluster of villages. Around 40 years later, detailed aerial photos revealed the true dimensions of the discovery. In fact, these are the remains of a massive site that slumbered in secret for two centuries. Like so many other settlements in the region, the city fell victim to a bloody civil war at the beginning of the 19th century. With the help of complex laser technology, the overgrown relics could finally be brought back to daylight. The analyses so far indicate that the lost city was built in the 15th century and covered an area of 
10 by 2 kilometers. The recordings revealed between 750 and 850 dwellings, but the researchers cannot yet estimate how many people once lived here. In the center of the village, there's an area of almost 10,000 square meters, which according to some researchers is divided into so-called kraals, that is, cattle enclosures. If this interpretation is correct, 1,000 cattle would have found space here and testified to the prosperity of the former residents. Before the true background of the lost city is fully deciphered, however, patience is required. Further investigations will take at least 10 years. Lake Natron Lake Natron, or the lake that turns dead animals to stone. There's no question that the body of water in Tanzania is one of the most extreme natural formations that our Earth has to offer. No other lake presents itself as alkaline. The animals that perish in Lake Natron freeze and are perfectly preserved. In detail, the high sodium carbonate content and other salts cause what is known as calcification of the animal carcasses. Despite these extreme conditions, Lake Natron is home to many animals, including a population of lesser flamingos numbering up to 2.5 million individuals. It becomes clear to us why the birds like it there so much when we take a look at the inhabitants of the water. In fact, billions of tiny brine shrimp cavort here, which serve as food for the flamingos and give Lake Natron its striking red color, which can even be seen from space. But that's not all. A few years ago, footprints of modern humans that were estimated to be around 120,000 years old were found on the former lake shore. A total of 350 footprints from more than 30 individuals have been immortalized here. The more than 250 artifacts discovered, including axes, tools, and knives, also prove that our ancestors once settled on these unforgiving waters. The true date and origin of the discovery has yet to be confirmed. But many researchers believe that an estimate of 120,000 years ago is far too old for such modern relics. Time will tell what becomes of this incredible discovery, but the future is certainly looking hopeful, as these discoveries may prove once and for all where the origins of mankind truly began. Alright folks, now your opinion matters. Which discovery captivated you the most? Do you believe that many of these relics are as old as researchers claim? Or do you believe that this does nothing other than prove that humanity isn't as old as we originally thought? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Finally, feel free to take a look at the other videos of our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.